Walker is now provisionally suspended because she tested positive. It's a huge blow to the country for sure. Most Olympic athletes only have to worry about their own performances, but equestrian riders have a one-ton animal to think about. Riding is not for the faint-hearted, but some of the best believe there are some rules that should change. Intense training. Charlotte Dujardin has three gold and one silver Olympic medals in dressage, but her road to success has involved rigorous training. Professional riders need to train hard, and phoning it in isn't an option. Charlotte rides seven days a week from 7.30 in the morning until 5 o'clock at night. On weekdays, she finishes up at the barn and hits the gym, but on the weekends, she spends time teaching others how to ride. Each night, she's in bed by 9.30 so she can wake up and start it all over again. According to Charlotte, she takes a mere 10 days of vacation time per year without any horses, and then it's right back in the saddle. This Olympic champion believes that riding is all about repetition, correction, and being strong with yourself. In order to stay consistent in the ring, you need to maintain good discipline outside of it. Accommodations Sonia Johnson won a silver medal in team eventing at the 2008 Beijing Olympics, and she has strong opinions on one of the rules in high-level competitions. She commented on the fact that rider Shannon Bailey wasn't allowed to take part in the EVA 95 section of the Lakes and Craters International Horse Trials. Shannon was born without any fingers on her left hand and only a partial thumb. Despite competing for 12 years, she wasn't able to compete in this event because of her missing digits. Although many fans were outraged by this, Sonia believes this may have been a rule-mandated safety concern rather than discrimination. She encouraged Shannon to apply for an exemption so she can hold the reins in a way that works best for her. 10-year-old Kyra Barrett found herself in a similar situation when Equestrian Canada refused to let her use a guide horse during a competition. Kira was born legally blind, but by using a guide horse, she had been able to compete in cross-country, jump, and dressage until this restriction was put into place. The Disability Alliance BC called this decision discouraging and unfair, and hopes this rule will change in the future to allow people like Kira to compete. Random Pairing a huge part of equestrian events is the bond between rider and horse, unless you're talking about the pentathlon. This Olympic sport is made up of five different events, fencing, freestyle swimming, pistol shooting, cross-country running, and equestrian show jumping. Sounds easy, right? The riding portion of the event involves jumping a 350 to 450 meter course with between 12 to 15 obstacles. The catch here is that riders are randomly paired up with their mounts only 20 minutes before the event begins. Chloe Esposito represented Australia at the 2016 Summer Olympics and overcame a 45-second handicap to take home the gold medal in the modern pentathlon. This athlete had been riding since age 12 and hopes to make it into the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Learn to fall Of course, learning how to ride a horse is essential, but so is learning how to fall. Just ask Holly Bennett Awid, who was sent to the hospital three times in the lead-up to the 2012 London Olympics. Her horse, Gin and Juice, has a history of bucking, and Holly took a huge fall during the games as well. She suffered a concussion and a sacral fracture, but it could have been a lot worse. Ideally, a falling rider should stretch out their arms and aim to absorb most of the impact with the area from their elbows to the sides of their hands. Using their hands directly can cause wrist injuries, and sometimes it's better to make a clean fall than to cling to an out-of-control horse. It's also important for riders to tuck their chins and round their backs to prevent serious neck injuries. And once they land, they need to get out of the way as quickly as possible to avoid being stepped on. Cost of competing Training for the Olympics can be incredibly expensive, especially if you're competing in an equestrian event. Show-caliber horses aren't cheap, and that's putting it mildly. It's estimated that the 236 horses in the Rio Olympics were worth over $100 million in total. It's not uncommon for individual horses to cost between $700,000 and $15 million. Edwina Topps Alexander came in ninth in individual show jumping riding a horse named Lintea Tequila who's worth $7.5 million. Now, Lintea Tequila has retired at the ripe old age of 16 after winning five-star Grand Prix classes in Doha and Miami. Not only does the sport require a lot of time and dedication, but riders need to have the funds to cover their expenses. Barrel Racing there are many different events riders can take part in, but one of the most heart-pounding of them all is barrel racing. Unlike other equestrian activities, there aren't any subjective points to be earned here. The most important rule here is you have to be fast. Riders need to complete the pattern properly and are penalized for knocking over barrels. Professional barrel racer Fallon Taylor says, even when you're trying to beat the clock, you still need to be patient with your horse. 
In addition to going fast, riders also have to maintain precise control over their horses in order to be successful. This sport and barrel racing requires maintaining precise control under incredible speeds. Stable Rules Every stable has its own rules, but this is taken to the next level at the Olympics. These horses come from all over the world and need to be at their absolute best, so there's no room for getting sick. During the 2016 Summer Olympics, they were stabled at the National Equestrian Center located at the Diodoro Olympic Park in Rio de Janeiro. Riders are only allowed to access the area between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. so that all the horses can get a good night's rest and be ready for the next day. Whether you're a human or a horse, you have to walk through a disinfectant bath in order to enter the stable so no germs are brought in. Each piece of equipment has to be properly sprayed down and sanitized, and every horse requires a clean bill of health and up-to-date vaccine records to be allowed inside. Once they're inside, they're still checked over twice a day by a veterinarian just to be safe. Banned Substances Equestrians have a long list of substances they're not allowed to take during competitions, and one bad test might have seriously derailed Canada's position in the 2020 Olympics. Nicole Walker helped her team qualify for the Tokyo Games with her scores at the Pan Am Games in Lima. That is, until she tested positive for a banned substance. However, Nicole insists that the result isn't from anything illegal, but rather from a drink called Coco Tea, a common treat in South America. She maintains her innocence and has filed an appeal. In her defense, medical tests have shown that drinking just a single cup of Coco Tea can result in a positive test for up to 24 hours. Since Nicole is at an Olympic level, the stakes here are incredibly high. If her appeal isn't successful, her team will lose their spot at the Olympics and millions of dollars in financing. Error of course. Everyone knows Mary-Kate Olsen is an actress and fashion designer, but she's also an equestrian. She competed in the Longines Global Champions Tour at Club de Campo Villa in Madrid in May 2019. But unfortunately for Mary-Kate, she broke a major rule during this international show jumping competition. She ended up being disqualified during her run with her horse Fatum because of an error of course. All obstacles must be completed in a certain way, and there's no room for mistakes. Despite this setback, Mary-Kate managed to place six in her class with her horse Naomi. Blood Rule On the surface, the blood rule seems to make perfect sense, but some equestrians believe it needs to go. Basically, it means that any trace of blood found on a horse means an instant disqualification. This regulation is supposed to stop riders from being too rough, but sometimes small injuries can happen on accident or just be a fluke. Diane Creech was eliminated from the Grand Prix special because of this rule. She claims, A very small Old Bell boot rub had opened up during the ride, and since she didn't know enough about the rule to challenge it at the time, the official results were published and now cannot be changed. Olympic dressage team bronze medalist Lara Graves supports this rule, although she acknowledges that if a rider injures their horse, it's almost always an accident. She believes it's important for the safety of the horses that this restriction stay in place, but others like Olympian Eric Lamaze think the rule is outdated and doesn't protect horses as much as it reassures the uninformed public. Horse Health It may sound counterintuitive, but sometimes an injured horse performs better than a perfectly healthy one. If a horse's legs are in pain, it will often jump higher to reduce the risk of hitting them against obstacles. Riders need to ensure that their mounts are in pristine condition or risk ending up like Tiffany Foster. Her horse, Victor, was disqualified from an Olympic show jumping event just 15 minutes before it was supposed to begin for this very reason. Her team manager, Terrence Miller, was furious about the decision, saying that this rule was supposed to be put in place to protect the horses, but Victor was in no danger in this situation. Rail Down Lucy Davis made it to the 2016 Summer Olympics only to end up with a four-fault penalty. She was a member of the American Equestrian Jumping Team, but her horse ended up getting spooked and knocking over a rail. At first, Lucy was devastated and blamed herself for dragging down her team, but in the end, they ended up taking home silver medals, which cheered her up considerably. She hopes to redeem herself during the 2020 Olympic Games and show the world that she can follow the rules and leave all the obstacles where they belong. Men versus Women most professional sports have separate leagues for male and female athletes, but not horseback riding. When these pros get to the Olympic level, they need to be prepared to compete against anyone who enters the ring. And it seems like horseback riding might be ahead of the game in this regard. The International Olympic Committee hopes to see more balanced games in 2020, which will feature 18 mixed events, double what was in Rio. Other blended sports include swimming, track, and triathlon. Trust your horse. There are a lot of rules in professional riding, but 10 
five-time Olympic medalist Isabel Wirth says there's one that's the most essential, and that's having a bond with your horse. She believes the sport is 60% horse and 40% rider, although during an intense competition like the Olympics, it might be something like 55% horse and 45% rider. Isabel describes her relationship with her horses as very close and very emotional. No mules. One of the strictest rules in horseback riding is that you need to compete on an actual horse. But Christy McLean is working on changing that restriction. She's been campaigning for mules to be allowed to compete. British dressage ended up altering their restrictions based on Christie's work, so now horses, ponies, and all animals born to a mare are allowed to take part. But Christie and her mule Wallace aren't done yet. They're working to convince the International Equestrian Federation that the definition of horse should be altered to include animals like Wallace. What do you think about the rules professional equestrians have to follow? Do they exist to keep both horse and rider safe, or do some of them go too far? Share your thoughts and opinions with us in the comment section, and then give us a like and click on the subscribe button for more videos from the Taco.